the Philippines, 17 regions and 81 provinces spread across 7,641 islands, each one a home to people, places, and potential. The Philippines, a member of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and Bimpiaga, the Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East ASEAN Growth Area. There's definitely more to the Philippines than just the national capital region. Find out more about what the rest of the regions that comprise our archipelago and the regional groupings that our country is part of have to offer to us and to the world on Regional Roundup. Regional Roundup with Bing Kimpo, a closer look at the regions in and around us. A wider perspective of our islands and our part of the world. Welcome back to Regional Roundup. My name is Bing Kimpo. In this mini-series, we are focusing on Philippine tropical fibers. In episode 1, we began with an overview of the Philippine Textile Research Institute and got introduced to some Philippine tropical fibers. In episode 2, we found out which regions produce these fibers, what they are used for, and what we are doing to take advantage of their availability. In episode 3, we looked into the demand for Philippine tropical fibers, as well as the obstacles to addressing these opportunities. And we were also introduced to the Tela Pilipinas Initiative. Tela is an acronym for Textiles Empowering Lives Anew. Now this episode, our fourth and final of the series, we'll get introduced to the Regional Yarn Production and Innovation Centers, or RIPEX. We'll also talk about blending Philippine tropical fibers with cotton, about how industry players can work with the Philippine Textile Research Institute, and about the road ahead for Philippine tropical fibers. Again, on the other side of this interview is Celia Ilumba. She's the director of the Department of Science and Technology's Philippine Textile Research Institute. So you've got that initiative called Tela Pilipinas, and you've told us what it is about. So part of that Tela Pilipinas initiative is the RIPIC. So that's the Regional Yarn Production and Innovation Center. So what is it? And you said that we need 71 or so of these, but you know, sadly, I think you've just got very, very few at this point. So where are these located? And I guess more importantly right now, what do they do? Yeah, um, the RIPIC is, as the word says, no, it's regional. It really is our <clears throat> response to inclusive innovation. And inclusive means that uh, you get everybody on board and inclusive is, is really considering everybody who's a stakeholder in your supply and value chain. So everybody who has a, a part or a counterpart in that is, is part of that inclusive movement. So this inclusive innovation or I to Tela a program um, looks to these locations where you have this confluence of, of events or confluence of factors. I mentioned the source of raw material, then the handloom weaving communities, the state university or higher education institute, which would buy in to the whole idea of, uh, of uh, developing, uh, establishing the textile ecosystem. So when we have this configuration of, uh, of factors, then that becomes a very viable or a candidate for a successful establishment of a right pick. So the first one was established in 2019 in Miagao in Iloilo as a partnership with the Iloilo Science and Technology University. That was a very, very fruitful partnership because we were now able to transfer the operational control. And by that, I mean the management, the continuing operations of the RIPIC to the ESATU in, in uh, Iloilo, um, uh, I think about three months ago. And we then established, we're now in the process of establishing the second one, which is in Isabella. But in this model, because we learned from the first, we're also going to be upscaling the first, by the way. So we learned along the way. The first RIPIC was an aggregated model, integrated model. By that, the spinning is integrated with a pre-spinning, pre the, the treatment um, process. So you have two components of, of making the yarn. In the model of our RIPIC in Isabella, we have now disaggregated it. By that, we have a community-based uh, setting for yarn, for, no, for fiber extraction in Apayao, Cordillera, 
for banana and pineapple leaf, a bamboo extraction facility in Kawayan in Isabela, and the spinning facility in Ilagan in Isabela. Both of those are with the Ilo Ilo, uh, sorry, Isabela State University. The first one was or is with the Apayao State College. And we are, of course, procuring the cotton from Ilocos Norte. So you have four different locations versus in the first RIPIC model where we only had one because we did not look at the ecosystem yet, or rather the backward chain of supply. We knew that we could procure the cotton from Leon in Iloilo, and we knew that we that there was available abaca and pineapple leaf in Iloilo, but no one was actually processing those abaca and pineapple in Iloilo. We had to get them from Negros Oriental and from Camarines Norte. Nevertheless, today you will find that they are now propagating cotton, not just in Leon, but also in Miegao. And they've also started to decorticate pineapple leaves from Pasi and Lemery in Iloilo. And they're now looking to localize abaca. So what does that mean? The RIPIC was a simple engine for pulling this uh, supply chain forward. So because even if you start extracting, if you have nowhere for that fiber to go, then you have nothing. You have you have just, a, you know, you have a, um, a gap, a very big hole that must be filled up. So we had to put in the RIPIC first, which must then be supported by their community-based um, Textile Fiber Innovation Hub. That is now the model in Isabella. So we're in the process of establishing it. In the, in the Mindanao model, we have actually made even more improvements. And we will also bring in the improvements we noted for Mindanao to the Isabella model and to the Iloilo model. In the and model where, where, where is the one in Mindanao going to be? It is still under um, under uh, selection process at this point because we employ what we call the analytic hierarchy process. This is also the same process that was used for the identification or the selection of the Philippine science high schools all over the country. So we want to make it very objective, and so we're employing a system, a methodology for the identification. But most likely, it is going to play out among regions 10, 11, and 12. It now is a question of where in those places and what is going to be, because there will be a scaled up extraction facility, a scaled up treatment facility versus the community that a scaled facility that is, uh, is going to be put up in Isabella. Here it's scaled up and the spinning will still be in another yet another location. And we're introducing the scaled up extraction, oh, I mentioned that. So at the end of the day, we're really looking to enable the system. But we are only on the third because we're very much constrained by funds. We are not, we don't have the funds available to us. We hope that there can be legislation that can now make the right pick a um, something that is by law can be propagated in locations where the conditions exist, where the criteria can be satisfied. So we are really held back by the fact that the government only has so much money and there are many other priorities in government and this is not really a you know not, not a life and that situation but certainly it's an, it has a lot of economic um when i speak about the industrial issues that happened in england oh that was quite a model because they are really you saw that is this had a huge impact not just to not just to um, to England itself, but to the rest of the world. Yeah, uh, we're, we're talking global trade and all of the implications yeah. of that. So, yeah. so yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, first of all, I'm just very, very happy that, uh, you know, when you say you're right pick right now, and you're, 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 uh, your big success, right pick number one, is in Miagao. Uh, and it's not even, you know, Iloilo City, it's Miagao. Yes. And, and and you're doing things that are far you know far away from the big city centers, uh, and to me, a lot of the downstream, uh, not necessarily related industries, but you know there will be other related Definitely. industries that will grow as well simply Definitely. because you've got these places already you know uh, doing so much business. You would like to think that uh, it's just. When you really integrate the ecosystem and you're thinking of your handle weaving communities, you'd like to be able to scale also their production. And so you have new machineries. And so we're looking to fabricators, yeah. people who can fabricate those machines right in the very location instead of sending them in from Manila or from wherever. So we've identified there's one in the Cordillera, one in um, in Iloilo, there's another one in the, the Mindanao area, in, in the Bukidnon area. So there are a number of them, but not not many enough. <laughs> there's, there's there's more room, more room for growth here. 
Well, uh, I'm hoping that with the success, many people will start. You know, it, it's the whole Pino experience. Uh, let's hope that uh, at some point, if people will see success in one area, they'll say, why do we do it here as well? And, you know, replicate so that, you know, uh, you're able to replicate your successes and hopefully create an, archipel uh, an archipelago-wide industry yeah. out of this. Why focus initially on blends with cotton? Well, to begin with, we don't have a lot of cotton, but we do have a lot of this natural textile fiber. So the question to us was, if we have so much of them, what use would they have for us? So the first was we can spin them and make them into yarns with cotton. The other is we can also regenerate them, which is a cellulosic regeneration similar to, to the first viscose model. But in this instance, to use the... Um, the closed loop system, and then we can do melt spinning. We can use them for non-woven um, production of materials. But when you replace, when you use a natural textile fiber and replace it with cotton, or rather replace the cotton with natural textile fiber, you're actually conserving water. For every one gram, we save 1%. So if we have materials that are 30% abaca or banana or pineapple leaf, you already save 30% of your water consumption. And I'm referring to the processing side. We're not even referring to, you know, to your backward, um, um, uh, to your agricultural uh, uh, side of, of use of water for cotton. So there is, there is a lot to be uh, gained by replacing with natural textile fibers. Obviously, I need a carrier material, and cotton is the most comfortable or the most um, uh, familiar material that we have uh, for us. But lyocell is another one. So yes, we, we are looking at the blends. We're not looking at 100% cotton because like I said, you can simply just buy that from abroad to be probably be cheaper if you do that. What can our industry players cotton fiber our fiber growers and other stakeholders avail of or take advantage of right now with you at the DOST PTRI that's the Philippine Textile Research Institute with your in uh, with your initiative Tela and with the RIPIX the regional yarn production and innovation centers what can they get from you yeah, or what yeah. can they what can they build on right now with what you're doing they can, first of, all, first of all, act as suppliers of the fiber. Uh, and by that, it means that they have to scale up the extraction capacity. Um, they may also consider we have a technology that is the heart of all of this that we, are, that we are working on. The heart of this is the treatment. And this is a patented technology. It can be had on a community-based uh, setting. It can also be on a pilot scale setting, which is what we have in Iloilo as well as the one that will be introduced from Mindanao. The community setting is based, a base is the one that is now being used in Isabella, sorry, in Ilagan, Isabella, as well as in, I apologize, apologies, um, in the Kawayan Isabella facility and the Apayao for the Liera facility. Those are community based, meaning smaller scale. Um, those are existing technologies. And so you are looking at that backward chain. First extraction. We can be the buyers of that, meaning PTRI can be looking to procure. There are others who are willing to procure that we can that we know of, especially for pineapple leaves. And then go into the treatment side, be an adapter, be a, uh, a licensee. You can also take a look at the handloom weaving fabrication, also be a fabricator. You can also look to training for natural dyes. There are also technologies that can be provided in that respect. Um, from treatment to dyes, to handle weaving. What's the road ahead for uh, Philippine tropical fiber? from your perspective at uh, the Philippine Textile Research Institute? 
director. It's very exciting, actually. Uh, as, as, for as long as we can put everybody together in the same playbook, we started, I started out by having an interest to, to clothe or to dress up 100 million Filipinos. Then I said, okay, even just 10%, that's 10 million, right? But I will be happy even with just 1.8%, the Philippine government employees, because we already see that even if our intentions, um, you know, you shoot for the stars, right? Land on the moon, that's great. Even if we land back on earth, that's also perfectly fine. So we're back on earth. And if we can just simply dress up even just a small percentage of our uh, government employees, that's already a big win. Uh, because then it would have meant that we have channeled back through the supply chain all the way from farmer uh, to the farmer all the way to your your uh, finishing facilities uh, in the NCR because that is where they are at the moment, which is also fine. I guess the point is if we can show proof of concept, then somebody else will jump in. Uh, somebody else will decide that it is worth the exercise or worth the investment because if there's investment that is required. So there is... Uh, so much that is ahead of us. Um, and the one thing that we will ask of everybody how they can participate in this, use anything or something, whether you wear it for, for shoes, for your outfit, for your jewelry or your home furnishings, something that is made by Filipinos in the Philippines using Filipino material or Philippine-made materials. I think that is the first and the best help that every Filipino can do. Because as I always say, if there is no demand, supply need not follow. We have to show the demand and then supply should follow. That's how the market works. That was our fourth and final episode in this regional roundup mini-series on Philippine tropical fibers. My takeaway, it seems to me that there is a genuine opportunity in front of us. We've got product. The Philippines grows a number of sources of natural tropical fibers, including abaca, banana, bamboo, bandala, pineapple leaf, and silk. There is demand. Locally, that wonderful piece of legislation that is Republic Act 9242, the Philippine Tropical Fabrics Law, prescribes that our government workers use official uniforms with fabrics that contain natural fibers produced, spun, woven, or knitted in the Philippines. Now that law's implementing rules and regulations specifies that, and I quote, all fabrics to be used for uniforms and for other purposes shall contain at least 5% by weight of either abaca, banana, and pineapple, and 15% by weight for silk. Getting those fibers though from the ground to becoming end products including uniforms has been a challenge. According to the Philippine Textile Research Institute, and I quote, the Philippines for the past years has been challenged in competing with the global market of natural textiles due to the supply gap, particularly of processed textile fibers which will be used to produce yarns, then fabrics. A step towards addressing the supply gap is the Regional Yarn Production Innovation Center, the first of which was recently set up in Biagao, Iloilo. More, I understand, are on the way. We look forward to further studies, steps, and investment by both the government and the private sector to enable us to realize the potential of our Philippine tropical fibers. I would like to thank Director Celia Ilumba of the Department of Science and Technology's Philippine Textile Research Institute for taking the time to come on Regional Roundup, as well as former Science and Technology Secretary Fortunato Boy de la Peña for helping make that interview with her happen. This has been Bing Kimpo. Catch you next time for another episode of Regional Roundup.